we need to measure performance and availability for any cloud-based service we build. We also need to set the targets so we know if a service meets expectations or if we need to improve its performance and availability. Without measurements and targets, we're just guessing about where to spend our efforts. Another name for such a target is a service level objective or SLO. An example SLO might be that the service should return good non-error responses 99% of the time, measured monthly. Let's say our service gets a million requests per month. That means we have an error budget of 10,000 failures per month. If we have had 5,000 failures in the first few days of the month, we're still meeting our SLO technically, but the trend is not great. We need to know so we can fix the service before we miss the objective. Let's see how to set this up in Google Cloud Run. Now, I use Cloud Run for my containerized workloads. Cloud Run is serverless, so I don't have to configure or maintain virtual machines or clusters. Google does all that for me. Here is the Cloud Run page for a live service that is receiving a couple of thousand users per day. The project contains a single Cloud Run service. Here you can see the details of that service. And here is the new SLO tab. Let's click it. There are no service level objectives here yet, so let's create one. Availability and latency are typical indicators that we'd like to monitor. This tool supports both. You can also define custom indicators from here. By the way, if you'd like to learn more about the best practices for SLOs, there's a great chapter about it in Google's free site reliability workbook. I really like that book because it contains practical examples from Google and Google customers like Evernote, The Home Depot, The New York Times and others. In that book, you can read about what worked for them and what didn't. I prefer to learn from their mistakes instead of making my own. Uh, I'll drop the link to the book in the video description below. Anyway, let's keep it simple and create an availability objective and use the default of request based. Click and continue. And here we see the successful requests and errors for the last hour. Click and continue. Now it's time to set the objective. I think it's useful to start with a loose expectation and refine it as I learn more. Let's say that every calendar month, the server should return a good response 99% of the time. Click and continue. Then I click here to create the new SLO. All right, now the page shows our newly created SLO. Here under service level indicator, we see the current fraction of successful requests over the last half hour. Here, under error budget, we see a red line that is declining gently. The number is above zero, so we're still meeting our SLO of 99% good responses. What happens when the error budget hits zero? Well, this tool is smart enough to tell if we're burning up our error budget too fast, and it can alert us. That way we'll know before we run out of error budget and miss our SLO. I'll click here to create an alert. Click next, pick Martin's cell phone, so I get a text message, and click next again. It can also send alerts to other channels like PagerDuty, Slack, email, uh, webhooks, and PubSub. But I personally prefer text message alerts because I see them right away. Uh, but you should pick what's right for your organization. Here I can enter instructions that will be sent with the alert. When you run a service for some time, you start building up a playbook of common errors. I know that in the past, latency has suffered when I forgot to set min instances for this particular Cloud Run service. So I will enter a reminder here in the alert message to check that setting. Okay, we'll be notified if we're in danger of missing our SLO. That is great because if we apply a bad configuration or deploy slow code, we will know and can fix it, hopefully before angry users start calling us. But what if we miss our SLO? That is a very valuable signal and is telling us to increase the priority of reliability work. That will do two things. First, it will reduce the rate of new features added to the service, which will increase stability. Second, it will give us time to work on improving availability and performance for the service. Once we meet our SLO, 
we can prioritize new features again. Any organization creating software always has a difficult choice. Should we add new features to the service, which often hurts performance and availability, or should we improve its stability? If we make the wrong choice, we will waste resources. But SLOs tell us which activity to prioritize. I want to show you one more cool thing before we wrap up. I'll click the hamburger menu here, scroll down to monitoring and pick services. Here we see the Cloud Run service that we just set up an SLO for. If we have App Engine apps or Kubernetes clusters in a project, we can click here to define a new service for them and then define SLOs. We can also create our own custom service for databases, virtual machines, networking, and a few others. If we build a set of SLOs for our entire service, we can see them all here in this dashboard and see which ones meet their SLOs and which ones don't. That gives us a great bird's eye view of our services. Now go define some great SLOs and take charge of your services availability and performance. Your customers will appreciate the clarity and you will learn if you should focus on new feature work or service stability. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions about SLOs, or if you have a suggestion for a serverless topic for a future episode, please let me know below. I read every single comment. Until next time.